Hey what's up coders welcome back to my channel. It's been a very long time that I did a video related to a Flutter topic so today we will see the importance of keys in Flutter and also understand um, the types of helpers that we have that is the types of keys and the different use cases in which keys are used effectively. Now the reason that I picked up this topic is as a Flutter developer it's very important to have a very basic understanding of keys. Um, even though we might not be using it in our project or um, most of the time the framework itself handles it for you. What is the use of key? So there are certain use cases where we definitely need to use key and we can very efficiently use them. So today we're going to see such use cases and we'll also see what are the other types of keys that are available. So moving on to the definition of key. The definition is pretty simple and straightforward. It says that um, if you want to preserve a state of a widget when moved around in your widget tree, then use key. So first thing, you need to preserve a state. A state could be a property like in the case of a checkbox, if it is checked or a color, or if you've marked favorite for a particular article or anything, any property of a widget that you would like to preserve when it is moved around in your widget tree. Now, what do you mean by move? Say for example, a list item, when you're removing it or adding it or reordering it, or if you're dragging a particular widget if there's some kind of movement happening with that widget and if you would like to preserve the state of it then you could use keys so that's the definition of it now when to use it you know that as i mentioned we are going to be adding and removing widgets um, of a same type in a collection and we'd like to preserve the state that's when we're using it first thing the second thing is we know that always a widget, whether it could be a custom or a um, predefined widget, everything is uniquely identified. So that unique identity is given by the framework during the build time. Now this identity corresponds to the key parameter. So the key is the one that actually uniquely identifies a widget. So that's how important the key. So in case if you do not mention it, the Flutter the framework itself will generate one for you. All right, so before we move on with those use cases and find out how keys are used in these use cases, I would like to point out a few useful points on keys. The first thing is that if your widget tree, say for example, um, you have a row and inside a row you have a simple text element and if it's completely a stateless tree, then you don't need key. The reason is uh, the Flutter framework of which builds the elementary. Elementary is nothing but a skeleton of your widget tree, which just has the information about the type of the eight widget and the reference to your child. This does not need a key because the data itself will be present in the widget. So that's one point you need to remember. If your widget tree is stateless, do not use key. Second thing is that most of the time the widgets elements are expensive. So instead of trying to recreate it every time, it would be nice if you try to reuse them. And that could be achieved with the help of keys. So there also keys plays a very important role in it. And um, moving on to the use case, I have used three um, use case. The first one is the form, where I've used a key in it. And the second one is a dismissible list where I'm trying to remove a particular item either by swiping left or right. Um, and there also I'm using a key. And in my third use case, it's a kind of a word game where I have these containers and these containers are draggable. Now I'm dragging it and I'm placing it over the other one so that I could form the correct word in this. So I'm going to show you how I'm using keys in all these three scenarios. All right, so moving on to the demo section, as I mentioned, I have three use cases, uh, the form, the list, and the uh, draggable. So first, let's focus on the form. So if you look at the form, um, in one of my previous videos, uh, which was the drop down uh, with Firestore, where I retrieved the drop down values from the Firestore, I had a similar UI where the name, phone, email, and the drop down. So I've used the same UI in this scenario as well. The another extra component that I've added here is the radio button. So I'm going to leave the code of all these. Um, 
three use cases and my GitHub link, so you can definitely check it out. The purpose of this video is to emphasize where I've used the key and why am I using key in this particular use case. So the UI is covered in most of my videos. Code also will be given in the video description. So the first thing, the form. Now, if you look at the form, uh, I have used um, uh, entirely a separate new page. And uh, the first thing what I do here is I have defined a global key. And what is its purpose is global keys are something which is unique across your entire app. That is, the key uniquely identifies your element. And now why am I defined it in my form is it ensures to save and get the form values at the time for validating purpose. So it first thing, it saves the form value and I'm all also be able to retrieve the form values with the help of this global key. So if you have a form, create a global key and give a unique name to it. First thing. Next, when you define your form, you need to define the same name which you have given in the global key. So you have to define the key property and give the form key value. The rest all remains the same. You can see it's a text form field with a keyboard, a validator and unsaved. So I have ensured that in all of my text form field, I have a keyboard type, I have a validator which checks if the value is empty or not. If it is empty, then I say phone is required and then on saved, I take those values and I add it to my model class. If you look at the model class, it's very simple. It just holds all my form details. So name, phone, email, password, account type and subscription. So all I'm doing is on save, get the value that I've entered in my text field and store it in the model class. So that on submit, I would be able to retrieve it directly from this model class. So that's what I'm doing. Now we will see the purpose of a key in our form. All right, so the thing that we're gonna focus here is on submit. Now on submit, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna save all the values and get those values from the form. So on submit, I have created a function called form submit and now let's define it and now inside this form I have to define my uh, current state to find if this has been validated or not that is if my form is validated or not we had a global key now this will be responsible to give me the status of the form the current value so we're going to use that and here we would be using our global key and check for the current state now this gives me the current state now once i have my current state i'm going to check if this has been validated or not so we have a function called validate if this returns true then i'd say proceed to the next screen or display a dialogue depending on your use case but here for the demo purpose first thing what i'm doing is i'm going to save the values and then display it in my console so to save the values of the form all i have to do is form state value dot save and then i'm going to use a print to print those values And then I'm going to give an else condition in case if the form is not validated. All right. So here we are using the key value to check the status, to validate it, save it, and print it. So this is the one purpose of using keys in your form scenario. So we are using a global key to get um, the form values anytime for validating purpose. So let's execute this and uh, let's see if the values are getting displayed in the console. So I would be entering some dummy values here and once entered you could see that are displayed on the console. So there you go, you can see that it's been 
you can see that the it says form is validated test one two three four and whatever details that i entered in the form is being displayed here so this is one use case of global key so let next we will see uh, how to use keys in our dismissible widget all right so now moving on to the second use case which is the articles and i've used a dismissible widget now first let me uh, walk through the structure of this page and then I'll show you where I've used the key and why I've used the key. So if you look at this, I have an app bar and it is a list of articles. And these articles are coming from the uh, simple uh, list file that I have. So first thing I have defined a stateful widget. Remember um, I had mentioned that if you're using keys, then it has to be a stateful widget of a similar type in a collection. So it's a stateful widget and I have created a simple list of string which is articles and I've added all the titles of the books and then I have the app bar and uh, in the app bar there's just a leading icon and a title. Then I've used a list view builder. I could have used a list view also but I've used a list view builder here. The first one is the item count. The item count is the articles. Article is my list here. So I have used the length. Next, I have used the item builder. So I've added the article which holds the individual article details. Then I've used a dismissible widget. Now the reason I have used um, a dismissible widget is that I want to dismiss a particular item uh, in this particular list. So how do I do it? With the help of this widget. And if I'm using this widget, I need to have a key. Now why it should have a creep property is that if you look at the element tree, um, all of the type here, I mean all of the items are of same type. So it should identify which element or which particular list item are you deleting. So to identify that we are giving the key here. So that is the importance of key in a dismissible widget to uniquely identify this particular widget. and the property that you give inside it depends on your use case say for example if you have an article with some unique identifiers then you can give that unique identifier as the key so in my case it's the book name and i'm sure no two book names are similar so that's the reason i have given it as article in my use case scenario and then i've said that on set state remove articles so that is when i slide it in one of the particular direction it just has to remove it so that is about the dismissible widget and here it's nothing but just displaying it in a container and the article details so it's pretty simple and this particular code is available on flutter documents so i'll leave a link to it and um, just wanted to emphasize the use of key and uh, so if i drag it i can dismiss this particular item and I can get that the darkness at noon is moved. So similar way, if I want uh, this particular item to be dismissed, I'm using the key factor in it. All right, so moving on to the third use case, um, I just got a little inspired by this UI where it's a to-do list and you are able to um, reorder them so that you can move the to-do list item above or below and sort it out depending on your task type. So it's basically a reorderable one. So looking at this, it's a vertical reorderable. So I thought of doing something similar to that and it's the words and it's the horizontal one. So here uh, you can see that you have the letters jumbled up and I'm gonna use a long press and then I'm gonna move it. And similar way, I'm gonna move this part and you could see I could get the word but this is not a completed app it's just that I have just implemented the basic part of dragging and adding it here um, now here I've used keys the reason is that uh, I've used unique keys um, because here each container is of similar type and it and it holds a text inside it now if I had used a value key where the key holds the value of the container, which is the letters, what if there are duplicate keys? So then it leads to ambiguity again. So instead of holding the keys, 
it could hold a unique key value. So that's the reason I have given a unique key in this case. I'm not going to show you how I have come up with this UI because it's going to be in a separate video tutorials. So if you want me to show how I have come up with this draggable feature, I can definitely pick it up. Please do leave a comment and I can come up with a tutorial on it. But I'm just um, showing you that I have used keys that is a unique key in this scenario for the draggable thing. Uh, so that if I'm performing any other operations on this draggable containers, the keys would be really handy. All right, so in this video, we have seen the importance of key and uh, the different use cases in which I've used keys, where in the form I have used a global key and then um, in the uh, dismissible list, I have used a uh, just a normal key and in this a word game I have used a unique key so I'm gonna leave uh, the code of a link in the video description as well so it is very important to know when to use key what type of key to be used whether it's a value or object unique page storage or a global key and uh, and also if possible try to avoid using keys because as I mentioned the sometimes the framework itself takes care of it so you need to understand when to use it that's it for this video uh, if you do like it give it a like and a subscribe and if you find this informative please do share it thank you